Hey, what's up, YouTube? It's Josh, FJ55 Iron Pig. Thank you as always for clicking on the video. Yeah, I'm gonna do several videos today. I think I haven't done any in a couple weeks, so uh, I want to get some out there because I've been slacking off. We've had a lot of icy weather here, like most of the country, but especially over here in the south, and that's taken up some time. And I've been lazy and spending time with my wife. It's been her birthday. Happy birthday, my love. And uh, yeah, I just want to get back into it. I've been waiting patiently, I think three weeks, maybe slightly more, for this. If you do not know what a rat's tourniquet is, it's a rapid, hold on, I'm going to get this messed up, rapid application tournament, tourniquet system, I believe is what it stands for. I probably just screwed that all up. Uh, these were originally started out, rapid application tourniquet system, it says right there, that would help. These were originally done on twist rate. Twist rate is kind of like a, um, a Kickstarter, Indiegogo for, uh, for tactical stuff, guns and whatnot. They don't have tons of people doing stuff on there. Like, you know, it's inundated with Kickstarter. It's just millions of stuff, it seems like. It's not, but it seems like it. But rats tourniquets are great. So I'm kind of getting off subject. Let's get back to it. Rats tourniquet. I really, really like this tourniquet. I was... In love with this tourniquet, the first time I saw it, I think it was James Yeager on Tactical Response was talking about it before they even came out. And he said, hey, get over there to twistrate.com. Is that right? Yeah, twistrate.com. And buy yourself some. I think there were eight, nine dollars a piece then. Uh, I forgot about it. I procrastinated about it. Other stuff came up. And it just didn't work out for me to pick any up. And I really kicked my butt for doing it because I could have saved myself a few bones. That would have been awesome. What I loved about this is how easy it is to apply it on yourself. Right hand, left handed, by yourself, having someone else do it for you. It is no brainer. It is the easiest tourniquet I have ever used on myself. Not, I haven't been shot or anything or needed to use one officially, but just training wise. And I got to tell you, man, this thing is awesome. There are people that bitch and complain that this is not a good one. You need to use a soft T or the SWAT or the uh, whatever else. What other ones, you know, have the two inch strap, the one inch strap. Because that's just the best one that there is. And you know, I've argued with people about that over and over. Even though I hadn't used it. And I say that I have not used it yet. But from looking at it, this looks like the way to go. Now, they complained. And a guy finally said something. I think it was just last week on Facebook or on YouTube. I think it was on YouTube. On James Yeager's one where he's talking about the AK-47 sling from Rats. Where they have one of these in, built into the sling. You just grab it and rip it out. And it comes out like that. And you could put it back in easily. Brilliant. But, uh, yeah, the guy was saying, you know, I think he said he tried it once, but he wasn't comfortable with it because that's not what he's been using for years. I guess he's in, mil in the Marines or the Army, I forget, whatever. Whatever one he's in. That's the one that he was issued. That's the one I'm trained on. That's the one I'm comfortable with. So that's the one I'm going to use. I, I don't want to use a rat. Like, that's fucking stupid. Pardon my French, but that's really stupid. By that logic, you should think he shouldn't be using a cell phone either. Maybe the first phone he ever used was a rotary dial. So he shouldn't be using a cell phone either. Don't neuter yourself just because you're afraid to try something different. Because you're self-centered, you're unwilling to learn something new. Hey, it may suck. It may not work for you, but give it a solid try. You already purchased it or borrowed one from a friend. Done. No more soapboxing. For now. This is how it comes. It comes in this packaging. You get this nice little card. Here's your contact information. You want to go to... RatsTourniquet.com. If you do not know how to spell tourniquet and some spell checks don't have it, it's, I'll do the whole thing for you. R-A-T-S-T-O-U-R-N-I-Q-U-E-T.com. Just put rats torn and you'll probably automatically come up rats tourniquet as your number one or number two response. Click on it, go to their website. And I'm sorry, I forgot how much I paid for these. I believe it was 12 or $13 a piece. Now, a lot of the other tourniquets cost double and even triple that amount. And they are not as easy to use. You cannot remove them as easily as either. Either. A lot of them use a windlass style, which is you put the strap around, you know, a couple turns. You put around this thing, and then you got to twist this buddy down all the way. It takes more time. And let's be honest with ourselves. If you have to use a rat's tourniquet, or any tourniquet, literally seconds will determine whether you live or die or the person you're putting on. Those precious couple seconds, you trying to get that windlass tightened down fast enough, 
it, honestly, it can determine whether that person dies. Could be you. Could be your child. Could be a stranger on the street that just got in an accident. A motorcyclist just had his leg ripped off by a, someone who wasn't paying attention. You may very well save that person's life. As Skinny Medic says, you never know when you're going to be the first responder. But uh, yeah, let's get to it. I really love the way this design looks on this. I'm calling it a cleat. I don't remember if that's exactly what it's called. I'm calling it a cleat. I really like the design. Uh, I hope the tourniquet never fails from practicing. I'm not going to use this one for practice. Or, I'm sorry, th this is the one I'm going to use for practice. The other one I bought too is going to be used for carry. And then I'll get another one and one will be moved over to something else. But if one ever breaks, yeah, it'll suck, but I'm going to turn this into jewelry or something. I don't know. I really, it just speaks to me. I'm done. Done with that. Uh, what do you got on here? Stuff to look at. We got, tap the screen, patent pending, rat's tourniquet, little informational. Stop. Three finger loop. What does that mean? That means this loop, here is your working end, we'll call it. And this is like surgical grade galvanized rubber, I think. It's, it is heavy duty. And if just feeling it, it's well made. It's going to last for several repetitions. I'm talking many, many repetitions. When you're using just nylon, you, you can deform the nylon, especially when you're training vigorously with it. But uh, this is passed through here. You got two eyes. This eye is sealed off so you can't remove it completely without cutting it and destroying it. Uh, three finger loop means three fingers. Put your hand, I'm sorry, put those three fingers through the loop and cinch it up. You don't have to go tight, but you basically just want a three finger loop. Why do you have this three finger loop? Three finger loop makes it easier to pass it through. So what you're going to do, two ways you can do it. You could pre-start this loop, which is not the best way. Why is that? If you have to pass that through someone, you could be causing more damage and more pain to your subject. Take your loop, let's say you got a bad laceration. In fact, uh, on James Yeager's uh, video again, I was reading the comments, there's some really good ones. There's a story of a guy who was moving, he happened to have one of these on him. He was opening moving boxes with a knife, did something stupid, cut into his forearm, and hit the artery. And he said he was squirting blood out. Quick thinking, level-headedness, his wife or girlfriend was freaking the F out, if you know what I mean. He grabs his tourniquet, his rat's tourniquet, applies it immediately, stops the blood flow, damn near immediately, keeps him alive. You hit your artery, you're going to bleed out quick. What is it? In the arm, you're looking anywhere from 10 to 20 minutes and you're dead. The femoral artery, of course, depending on your heart rate. Femoral artery, you could be gone in 5, 10 minutes. Your neck, your carotid, possibly even less than 5. So you got your loop, right? This is probably not the best demonstration. I've only played with it maybe 6, 7 times now. And you pass it through. Here, let's not do black on black. Let's do it on skin. You pass it through that 3 finger loop. So you've created a slip knot. See that? So let's say I'm cut here. Old school, and a lot of people still believe this, you want to go two to four inches above your wound. So, you know what? Let's grab a pen. Let's make this a little easier to see. Let's say I cut myself right here at the X, okay? Okay, okay, okay. So two to four inches, you want to be about here. With a cut, it's pretty easy to tell that that's limited. That's where all your damage is done. So two to four inches really isn't a big deal. Imagine this is your leg or your arm and you've been shot. If you know anything about ballistics firearms going into any bodies, if you watch any movies, watch any documentaries, especially in training videos, you know it doesn't matter the projectile necessarily from any caliber, especially frangible, which is one that disintegrates, breaks apart upon impact. It may go in here, but the round could exit through your shoulder. You don't know where it's at. Now, if it exits through your shoulder, there's really no way to tourniquet that. You're just screwed. However, let's say it enters here, but the damage goes all the way up into here, the meat, or even up into your bicep a little bit. The rule of thumb, combat, go high or die. That means when you apply your tourniquet, go as high as you can, or you're going to die. So let's assume we can, with our magic eyes, we can see here's an entrance and here's an exit, or it's stuck somewhere in here, but you can't see it with your naked eye. So apply your tourniquet like this. We're going to do this as if I'm actually hurt. You pull it tight, see me deforming the skin. You bring it around. You don't want to do it necessarily right next to each other. But you want to have a good two inches at least of the strapping. Let's bring this back a little. Now how are you going to stop this? See that cleat? 
Oh, my arm hurts. This is painful. It hurts when you put a tourniquet on. I can't really use my hand very well because it's on my tendons as well. But you see, if I had my... I couldn't find it. I was looking for it. The little finger thing you put on your toe or your finger where it measures your pulse, your heart rate, and your oxygen level, it would show you there is no blood flow coming through here at all. Let me see. No, I got nothing. It's completely cut off. How long did that take me? Granted, I was talking while I was doing it. It's not going to take you long. 10 seconds? Tops? Now, with the other ones of windless, I may still be going until I get it tight enough and getting all the wraps around it. It's already been over a minute. This is quick. And the really nice thing about this for training is you can do it over and over and over. You're not going to destroy the bands. But look at this. Look at that wide strip. All that's cut off from here down. There's no oxygen coming in. There is no blood flow coming in. It is completely tourniqueted, if you want to put it that way. To remove it is simple. What do you do? Oh, before I do that, if you're concerned about it coming off, you come over to the opposite end of the cleat and you put it through one more time. It's that simple, guys. Remove it. Pull it out. It's under tension, so put a little tension this way, otherwise it's going to flip out of there. Pull it out like that. Oh, man. That was starting to really hurt. Woo! That tingles. But look at this. It's right there. Now, tourniquets. You may be worried about applying a tourniquet on someone. I apologize if this is a little bit of a long video. A tourniquet, you want to put your mindset in those advertisements for, what is it, Cialis and Viagra. I don't remember if there's another one or not. Let's say you can't get your penis not to be hard or erect anymore. And it's just rock hard. You're just, boom, it's out there. It's been an hour. It's been two hours. You were bumping up on trouble. It's three hours. You should really be considering going to the hospital. If you were erect for more than four hours, you're going to be destroying and killing tissue. Think about it. When you're erect, your penis is engorged with blood. If that blood cannot get out, the tissue cannot get oxygen, and the tissue will die at a, starting at about four hours. A tourniquet can be applied and remain on a person for up to four hours without severe damage being done to the limb. It's true. Look it up. Don't have to take my word for it. I'm not an expert by any means, but four hours. If you have to apply a tourniquet to yourself, or especially, yeah, especially yourself, but anyone else, to help the first responder, or the second responders, you'd be technically the first, but uh, advanced medical care and those people, if you have a magic marker, like a permanent marker or something, right on your forehead, the letter T and the time, if you can, in blood or marker. Why? Well, some may not see this right away. By having a T, that's universal for tourniquet, and the time, it lets the person know that's how long that tourniquet's been on there. So right now it's approximately 12.05 p.m., so I do T, 12 o'clock. You don't have to get crazy. Or T, 12. If you're doing it on yourself, it's even more important that you do that. If you're by yourself and you're out in the country or something, I'm going to tell you a quick little story. I know this video is long. Stay with me. Uh, two years ago, two and a half years ago, there was a guy. He was out hunting with, I believe it was his son and his father. They're out in the fields here in Arkansas. And it was a guy that, well, used to work with us. And he's climbing over fences. Something happens. And I don't remember if he slipped. I wasn't there. Or if one of the barbed wire lines broke. While he was up on the third line. Barbed wire fences, if you don't know, if you're a city dweller, you have three lines of barbed wire. They stand about four, four and a half feet tall. And they're very tight. And it will jack you up. It grabs your skin, your clothes, it rips it up easily. But he's standing on the third one, the top rope if you will. And if something happened, it breaks, he loses his balance and he falls. On the inside of his groin, right by his manhood, that stake goes into him. Here's kind of like a visual. It goes up and way deep into him. Well, kind of luckily his, his dad and his son were there. They pull him off of the stake, first of all. Ugh. But he winds up dying. Blood loss. It's really sad. If he had a tourniquet, would he have lived? No. Because where it was located, right here, it hit his femoral artery. There's no way to put a tourniquet there around your belly. I mean, you can. There are ones made kind of specifically for it. It's much larger, though but he may have still died. The only way they possibly 
and that's even for medical professionals to be hard out in the field, would be to reach up into that hole and pinch off that broken femoral artery. If they could even reach it, if it retracted further up, still would have been nothing they could have done for them. Now, that's not really a good story for this. The first story I told you was much better. But keep in mind, a lot of people say if you have the ability to take someone's life, you should also have the ability to save someone's life. I do believe that. And I have some Israeli bandages on the way from Texas, I think it is. And I want to show you what those look like. I got three or four of them. I'm going to rip one open and show you how it's used. But yeah, you should absolutely be able to save someone's life as well. Because remember, the chances of you having to use your firearm if you carry firearms against someone in a self-defense situation are very slim, thankfully. It's there. It could happen right now. But it's not something to dwell on. You are probably a hundred, a thousand, a million times more likely, I'm making that up by the way because I don't know, more likely to have to use a tourniquet or bandages on a complete stranger that's been in an accident. Maybe it was a worker who fell off a, the roof at work and it really gets her bad. A car accident. There are tons of stories of people saving people's lives with tourniquets and just bandages. Stop that bleeding with direct pressure is going to save someone's life most of the time. Treat them for shock until the ambulance crew can arrive. You are going to save someone's life by being the first responder at an accident way before you are going to be someone involved in a self-defense shooting. Those are the odds. You're also not likely to win the lotto, but we still play. Um, this is not the easiest way to carry this. This is just the first time carrying it like this in that slimline pouch. I have a new wallet I'm going to show you on the next video. This is the ITS slimline pouch. It's made specifically for medical gear. I cut off the molly attachment for a belt, but that's when I'm putting my other rat's tourniquet in. It's working pretty good so far. It's a little bulky. I need to figure something else out because I can feel it in my back pocket. So yeah, that's kind of that. That was a very long video. I apologize. Um, if you guys do have, and gals, have any questions at all about the RAS tourniquet, and you don't feel like going online and doing a Google search, go to their website, ask them. They're very interactive. They're on Facebook as well. You ask them a question, they'll get back to you. They're really good people. Don't remember their names. Not important. RAS tourniquet. Get one. Get two. Get one for every member of your family. Throw it in the glove box. You got a bug out bag? Throw it in there. You have your range bag? Do you have ammo and your your shooting glasses and ear protection and eye protection, get one, just throw it in there. Shooting ranges, you're probably more likely to get shot at a shooting range than you are out in the town. Get yourself one, even if all you do is practice with it. You'll be that much better. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care.